cyclic AMP is one of several second messengers in cells made during a G-protein mediated signal transduction. Some of the others are shown in this slide. First, let's include the cyclic AMP mediated activation of protein kinase A, or PKA for short. Now let's look at what happens when the signal binds to the receptor and activates a membrane protein called phospholipase C. This generates two intracellular second messenger molecules. One is inositol phosphate 3, or IP3, shown here in the cytoplasm. And the other is diacylglycerol, or DAG for short, which is actually embedded in the plasma membrane. The IP3 causes the release of stored calcium ions from the smooth endoplasmic reticulum in the target cell, which in turn binds to a membrane-bound protein kinase called protein kinase C, or PKC for short. At the same time, diacylglycerol, or DAG, also binds to the PKC. With both DAG and calcium bound to the protein kinase C, this enzyme is fully active and initiates a phosphorylation amplification cascade, leading to its own ultimate cellular response. This slide simply summarizes many of the cyclic AMP and therefore protein kinase A mediated cell responses, including changing plasma membrane permeability to specific molecules, remodeling the cytoskeleton to change cell shape, activating transcription factors in the nucleus to regulate gene expression, and even regulating protein synthesis on the rough endoplasmic reticulum, not to mention a few others. Protein kinase C and phospholipase C mediate some common response pathways, but also have some independent effects, noted on this slide. Specific examples of protein kinase C effects include the release of neurotransmitters from nerve cells, cellular differentiation, and participation in glycogen breakdown and fat synthesis in different tissues, as well as the secretion of hormones from endocrine glands, such as growth hormone and LH, which is luteinizing hormone, from the pituitary gland, and testosterone from the testes. These hormones are mitogenic, that is, they stimulate cell division in their own target tissues. Phospholipase effects include the stimulation of the release of hormones that enhance liver glycogen breakdown and the secretion of amylase by the pancreas to help digest intestinal carbohydrates. Phospholipase C also stimulates liver production of some blood clotting factors, like thrombin shown here. Some chemicals mimic the mitogenic functions of protein kinase C one class of carcinogenic chemicals is the forbol esters, normally found in some plants. As shown here, they can get into cells and bind to protein kinase C, activating it and causing the cell to respond as if it were responding to hormones that activate the protein kinase C. Because human cells have no way to get rid of the forbol esters, the activated PKC has persistent mitogenic effects, leading to cancer and tumor formation. Most amino acids, or amino acid side chains, can't be phosphorylated. PKA and PKC are both called serine threonine kinases, which just means that they catalyze the transfer of phosphate groups from an ATP to an appropriate serine or threonine side chain in the target proteins.